And this is Diver Wimpy Kid, the Plainview Serial Killer. Tuesday. I don't know where to start. It just, it was horrible. One of my classmates, Jamar Lara, he was found dead, and I'm the one who discovered his corpse. I was on my way to the yearbook. I was on my way to my yearbook club meeting, and I saw a few drops of blood leading from one of the classrooms to the stairwell. I don't know why I did it. Perhaps out of morbid curiosity or something else entirely. I opened the door and what I saw will haunt me for the rest of my life. Jamar's severed head sitting next to a chair and his dismembered body laying in the chair, his left arm hacked off. For right now, the school is closed while they try to find who did this. Oh Jamar, I never liked you, but you deserved so much better than this. I'm so sorry. Wednesday. They found Jamar's murder weapon. Well, a part of it. A bloody saw was found in the men's bathroom. Safe to say, that's a murder weapon. So please keep coming to me for questioning about Jamar's murder. Mom has been sending them away every time, and she's been trying to get me to therapy. I don't know how much kind words can help me with what I saw, but it can't hurt, I guess. School closed down for the next week, so the police can do their investigation. I doubt I can help, but I'm going to try to do some research myself. First thing I want to do when Dad gets home from work is to ask to go to the library. They have a big forensic section. I'm sure there's something there that can help me find some clues. Thursday. I brought Riley into the investigation. I wanted to do this myself, but Riley's dad is a cop. So maybe we can get some information from him. Riley's not helping with the forensic side of things just as well because he didn't see the body. For now, he's calling up our classmates and asking them what they were doing at the time of the murder. For now though, I found a small piece of evidence. It isn't much, but there was no way death by saw wouldn't leave blood splatters. I'm not talking about the puddles. I'm saying the saw would made the blood go much further than just the puddle underneath the Jamar's corpse. Especially considering he was only a few feet away from the wall. So either the saw is a red herring or the killer had the time and know-how to clean that blood up. Friday. Other than the bloodstains not matching the murder weapon, I haven't found anything useful from the forensics books, so I shifted my focus to getting statements from everyone else at school. So far, everything matches with what I saw, but there is something I find very worrying. If everyone is telling the truth, it means I was the last person to see Jamar alive. About an hour before I found his dead body, he asked me for directions to the drama club. Now that I think about it, the classroom he was found in was in the same building as the drama club, and I think Erica's in the drama club. Erica's been one of the few uncooperative people so far, but one way or another, I have to get her to talk. Saturday. I don't know how, but the killer knows what I'm doing. I, I should have been more careful keeping this a secret. This morning when I went to get the mail, I found a letter with only my name Sharpied on it. I don't know what I was expecting, but it certainly wasn't this. The only times I really let people know what I was doing was during my interviews and at the library. Someone was probably listening in or something. If they already have a name for themselves, they must have planned this and known they would have made a name for themselves. I, I think I'm going to look up this handyman. I doubt I'll find anything, but it might be worth a look. This is bad. I assumed this was an isolated incident, but no! This has been going on for years. The handyman was a serial killer in the late 90s. He slash she targeted middle school students, killed them, and cut off the left hand of each of them. They were never caught. The handyman strikes again. Plainview is in shambles after the eighth victim of the handyman was found. The victim, Alicia Walters, was sent with a letter from the handyman in her pocket made from old newspaper clipping. Her cause of death was deemed to be three stabs in the back of the head with a screwdriver. If anyone has information that could lead to the handyman's capture, call 1-800-214-0588. The handyman always kills with maintenance tools and targets whoever found the previous body, sending threatening notes to torment his victims before he kills them. If any of this happens to you, contact the police. I guess all my classmates can be ruled out as the culprit. Not that it matters anymore. I'm done investigating. Tomorrow, I'm going to the police station and showing them this note. I feel like I was so close to cracking this case. If the handyman is coming after me, it just isn't worth it. Sunday. No, 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 no. It's dad. He doesn't believe me. I showed him the note in the news article and begged him to take me to the police station. After all that, he still assumes this is just some sort of prank. In desperation, I told him I would go to the police station myself. He reacted in the worst way possible. Worst yet, the school called everyone today and told us we had to be back tomorrow. I'm going to warn Riley about this. If the handyman really does kill me, I want Riley to know who they are and what they're capable of. I hope it doesn't come down to that. As long as I stay where people can see me, I should be fine, right? Monday. I'm back at school. Nothing terrible has happened yet. But knowing any adult I pass by could be playing how they're going to kill me is nerve-wracking. Not making things any better is Riley. I told him to dress in a way where he wouldn't be completely recognizable. I expected to wear a hoodie or something. What I did not expect was him coming to school just like a lion. Something important came to light today, though. Two of the girls in my homeroom approached me during lunch about the case. Becky claims that Mr. Nerd never showed up to the gaming club the day Jamar died. Stranger still, Mrs. Hernandez canceled last minute on that same day. We're all meeting at the library after school. Stacy says she has an idea to find the clue we need. 
to track the killer. Tuesday. I've infiltrated the storage unit. I'm running down everything I see so far. Mostly just book pages and printer paper. I can hardly see a thing in here anyways. It's so dark. Wait a minute. I found something in the corner. It's a box full of power tools with a few other things in it, like white rags. Oh my god. Under that box was another. It was sealed, but I took one of the tools and broke through. It's hands. Lots and lots of severed hands. I, I have to run. I can't run. Someone just came in. I know I just made a mess, but maybe they won't see me? Greg Effley, found dead. Plainview is in shock after the second murder has occurred in Plainview Middle School within a two-week period. The killing happened between 12.30 and 1.45 p.m. Tuesday, March the 18th. Though his cause of death is deemed to be a blunt force trauma from a claw hammer, circumstances are uncertain due to a bomb detonating near his corpse after the murder had taken place. The bomb was short range and damaged very little more than Greg in his immediate surroundings. This is unacceptable. My husband knew my son was getting death threats, but did nothing about it. Susan Hefley. The life and death of Greg Hefley. Greg was always a creative and sweet boy, says Susan Hefley. He put so much heart and soul into all his journals. I plan on publishing them soon. The creative genius sadly had his life cut short on Tuesday. The details evidence goes deeper than a hammer and a bomb. Both of Greg's hands are missing after the bombing, though that could be a result of it. The real troubling news is Greg allegedly received a letter from the handyman, an infamous serial killer who terrorized Plainview in the late 90s. Tuesday. Today's Greg's funeral. Even though it wouldn't change what I did, I wanted to go get some closure. But no! Susan left without me this morning. I called a taxi so I could get to the funeral in time. As soon as I arrived, Susan turned around and screamed. That's it. I'm gonna talk to my lawyer tomorrow. We're getting divorced. I've wanted to leave her for years, but I stayed so I could be a good father. I know the courts tend to favor women, but I'm gonna try my best to get custody. My sons deserve better than a mom. So petty, she won't let her husband attend his own kid's funeral. Tuesday. I just got back from Greg's funeral. I, I thought I would feel better afterwards, but I don't. I, I can't believe Greg's been gone a whole week. He was my best friend. Dad's been trying to make me feel better, but it's not working. Several mornings, I wake up and wonder when Greg's coming over. Only for reality to hit me, and I remember he's never coming back. Especially not when his death is due to my own failure. If I told Dad the truth, I know he would tell me guarding the door wouldn't have saved Greg. But I know if I was there when Greg needed me, he would still be alive. Wednesday. Today, Mrs. Hefley invited me over, so I could take what I wanted from Greg's room. She said taking stuff is what he would have wanted. The only thing I wanted was a photo album with a bunch of pictures of me and Greg. But I knew taking only that would make Greg sad. So I took all his video games and stuffed animals. Even though I didn't want it, I took his case holder too. Maybe if I showed her dad, it can help find the man who killed my best friend. She told me I was the best friend her son ever had. I feel sorry for him. Who would want me as a best friend anyway? I need to stop thinking sad thoughts. Greg wouldn't want that. After I got home, I showed dad Greg's crime notebook. He looked through a few pages before making a phone call and driving away. Dad didn't come back. Not even at dinner time. Mom says he just went to work, but he wasn't supposed to work today. I've been trying to think about other things. I put all Greg's video games by the TV, put Greg's stuffed animals next to my bed, and I don't know what I want to do with the photo album yet. It seems too special to put with the others. It's bedtimes now. I hope Dad will be back when I wake up. Wednesday. Good news. Dad's back. The folder had some really important evidence, and he was just taking it to work. They were so proud of me, they let me have sugary cereal for breakfast. After that, Dad took the day off so he could go to the amusement park. Most of the rides were too scary, but... It's still the happiest I've been in a long time. The only thing that isn't making me happy is Dad telling everyone I found all the clues. It's not true. Greg found all of it. He deserves credit too. Thursday. Dad took me to work with him today. He spent all morning explaining stuff, like how the camera tapes inside the club were stolen and how four other people went into storage building. He spent all morning explaining stuff, like how the camera tapes inside the club were stolen and how four other people went into the storage building around the time Greg died. I didn't really understand anything until he said, Dad told me they took both of them in for questioning. He doesn't think they're going to say anything that could lead them to the murders, but it's worth a shot. Friday. Nothing really worth writing about happened today. Dad went to work and I stayed home with Mom. The only thing related to the case is both Mr. Nern and Mrs. Hernandez refused to talk. And after 24 hours, they had to let both of them go. I just saw Mrs. Hernandez drive up to her house. She looks upset. All I want to do is find Greg's killer or just wake up and realize this is all just a bad dream. It's almost bedtime. Well, I hope something happens tomorrow. Miss Becky, killed by the handyman. The beloved Plainview Middle School teacher, Miss Becky, was murdered by the handyman. When Papa Tony heard a scream outside, he ran outside to see someone beating Mrs. Becky with a wrench. She was then taken to the hospital, where she died from the beating. The attacker was believed to be the handyman due to the use of maintenance tool and a clear attempt to cut off her hands. 
The attack happened on Friday at 8pm. If you have information that could lead to the handyman's capture, contact the authorities. And please report if you receive a letter from the handyman. Both Greg Hefley and Miss Becky received them shortly before their deaths. Monday. I just got out of school. It was horrible. Greg was my only friend and he sat next to me in all my classes. A couple times I would say something, only to remember the chair is empty. The worst part of the day was second period. It was Mrs. Becky's class. I cried the entire period. Worst thing of all was until Mr. Nern gave her a detention. Patty would go over to my seat and laugh at me for crying. Wait a second. Mr. Nern is one of the prime suspects and I saw Mrs. Hernandez at the time of the killing and Patty is with him alone right now. I turned around and ran. I knew she was already there but maybe he hadn't tried anything yet. Without thinking I yanked the door and ran inside. Mr. Nern was holding a crowbar. I tried to turn around, but he started slowly walking towards me saying, Would you like to be my friend? I was too scared to run, but I also wanted to know the truth. I knew Greg would have been brave if he was doing this for me. Knowing that made me brave enough to say, Why are you doing this? It's hurting innocent people. Why did you kill Greg? My name is Kieran and Nern. I am 35 years old, but you don't want to hear about that, do you? You want to hear about the killings. It all started in 1991, in the town of Dorio, where I got my first kill. It was an ex-girlfriend. It was easy to lure her where nobody could see us and slit her throat. Before I disposed of her body, I caught her hands to keep as trophies. From then on, I had an uncontrollable urge to kill. All of my targets would be women about my age. As always, I cut off their hands to get more souvenirs. But in 97, one of the bodies turned up, and I was one of the suspects. So, I packed up my stuff and moved to Plainview. I could continue my killings, but while killing people closer to my age was more satisfying, it was far more difficult than picking off my students. After a few years, I decided I would wait until the dust settled before returning to Dorio and starting the whole cycle again. But the week before I would announce my move, I saw Jamar with his head stuck in the chair. I decided I would make one final kill before I left. I had no idea I would draw so much attention to myself. I should still be able to return soon. I only have to remove one more loose- Before he could even finish talking, I picked up one of the chairs and threw it at him before slamming the door and taking off. Even though I had a big head start, Mr. Nern caught up with me before I got off school grounds. But when I got to the woods, he was less than 10 feet away from me. I don't think I would have made it if I didn't run to Mr. Hefley while he was on a walk. I didn't have time to explain what was going on. All I did was yell, It's the handyman! Before Mr. Hefley turned around and ran at Mr. Nern and hit him in the face. Even after Mr. Nern dropped his crowbar, Mr. Hefley kept hitting him. Nothing made him stop. Not even when Mr. Nern started crying and begging for him to stop. I thought it would finally be over when Mr. Hefley called the police, but Mr. Nern tried to run the second he took his eyes off him. When Mr. Hefley caught up with him, he pushed him, right in front of an oncoming truck. The handyman is dead. Plainview is finally safe. On Monday, March the 31st, the infamous serial killer known as the handyman was killed by Frank Hefley, the father of one of his victims. Though Frank is getting prosecuted for killing, the entire town is rallying outside the courthouse in his support. I'm so glad all his victims have gone the justice they deserve. And I'll stand by my dad no matter what, says Roderick Hefley, the brother of Greg Hefley and the son of Frank Hefley. Prosecution refused to comment. July. Mr. Hefley's trial ended today. He was found not guilty for the murder of Mr. Nern. I helped him out as a witness. The prosecution didn't even try. I guess they were just happy to see so many people brought to justice. Lately, I've been helping dad solve other crimes around Plainview. I've only solved three so far, but Tad tells me three cases can make all the difference. I don't have much room left in my diary, so I've decided to finish it off with a tribute to the amazing detective and my best friend, Greg Hefley.